Good evening, everybody. I'm coming at you from Emilio Cigars World Headquarters in Newark, Delaware, and I'm actually standing in the retail humidor at Delaware Cigars, co-located where Emilio Cigars is. I'm here with Emilio Cigars brand developer, the one and only Gary Griffith, and uh, Gary's been kind enough to just take a few moments to talk to us. Um, my name's Will Cooper. I am the uh, publisher of Cigar Coop, and uh, we're actually on the heels of IPCPR. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk to Gary a little about what he has uh, coming up at IPCPR, uh, get a few other thoughts about what's going on at Emilio, and maybe get some perspectives on the industry as a whole. So, Gary, thanks for taking a few moments. Anytime. To to anytime. Okay. Glad to. Right. So, Gary, a lot of stuff happening at Emilio. Um, what's going to be happening at the IP, IPCPR show in Orlando? Um, our intention is to um, re announce the release of um, the... La Musa, which is the replacement of Grimalkin, um, and that may actually occur a week or so earlier. We'll see how that goes. Uh, there's the potential of the second blend in that series being available at least for order about that time, which is the La Musa Malete. Um, we will be announcing the release of our first blend uh, in the Los Regalos series. Um, this week, obviously, we'll be releasing the uh, Dreg Limitado, and uh, I'm sure there'll be a little buzz about that at IPCPR, and people will be wanting that, whatever's left from it. Uh, and we're going to be announcing a lot of forthcoming products. Um, we have uh, the Carpe Noctum, which is coming out of AJ's factory, uh, which will probably come toward the end of the year, but we'll start taking pre-orders for that at IPCPR. Um, there's the Los Regalos Vintage 2006, which is a all 2006 tobacco cigar, uh, which will become official at uh, IPCPR. So a lot of fun stuff in place. There's the new sizes uh, in a couple of the existing lines. There's uh, uh, Corona size in AF1 and AF2, which uh, all you Southern guys have been demanding. Uh, so Nathan finally uh, twisted my arm hard enough to do that. And we're going to do some uh, Lanceros in certain blends and, and uh, probably have those available shortly after IPCPR. Excellent. So Gary, you're really, um, I uh, termed you a boutique cigar company. Um, but you're doing some things that I think are going beyond the boutique right now. Namely, you just announced some new uh, companies that Amelia Cigar is going to be distributing. Yes, that's true. We have reached an agreement with uh, George Rodriguez, R Rodriguez at Rodrigo Cigar, and uh, I think we can help him. Um, and so we're looking forward to distributing his cigars for him. Uh, we're also going to be distributing a brand called Herederos de Rubenia, uh which is produced in Esteli. That is an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper uh, with a Honduran binder and all Nicaraguan filler. Um, which I think is a very, very good cigar. It's, it's very new to the market. It has some minor exposure in the European market, but they had no American distribution, U.S. distribution, and we're going to handle that for them. And frankly, because we have the warehouse capacity that a lot of small companies don't have, um, we're looking to help out other boutique companies in the same way um, that when I first began Emilio, so many bigger players were willing to help us. What do you think those, uh, those brands are going to bring to uh, your portfolio? Well, I think what it brings us is um, certainly the recognition that, that we're going to be um, not an insignificant player in the industry over time, um, that we have the capacity to uh, do bigger things than most small companies have the capacity to do. Um, and we look forward to that. And frankly, I'm so dedicated to the small producers, the boutique guys, the guys that are using limited production tobaccos, that if there's any way I can help somebody that's doing smaller production stuff gain their foothold the same way that bigger players in the industry helped me in the, in the beginning, um, I'd like to do that. Excellent, excellent. I've had the Rodrigo cigars for the first time last week, and I was very impressed by them. Oh, it's wonderful stuff. I think George has done uh, a, uh, a great job with that cigar, and, and something he should be proud of. Excellent. 
So Gary, you have your pulse on the industry, and um, you're going to be on the IPCPR. And, and I'm curious to see what, what things are you going to look for at IPCPR. What kind of trends are you seeing in the industry this year um, that you may want to just tell some of our viewers about? Well, I think the one thing that I'm seeing is a larger presence of smaller manufacturers like ourselves. Um, I think that uh, you know those of us who are who have small enough production that are able to utilize tobaccos of which there is not enough available for larger companies uh, to do anything with. I, I think that adds a lot to the industry. I think it, it you know gives a lot of um, difference to what's appearing in the marketplace. It gives people the opportunity to create uh, very unique small production products and I don't think those products should be disparaged. Um, you know obviously what we're all striving for as cigar smokers is to find that ideal smoke <coughs> and we all know that no such thing exists. But we all strive for it, and we all should, and it's what we should be doing. Um, but, you know, practical reality is the big players in the industry have to meet fairly substantial production goals to make a product worth their while. And the small producers don't have to do that, and I see the small producers. I think if there were any one trend that I'm seeing that's dominating the industry, is that the small producers are becoming um, an ever more important presence in the industry and in the marketplace because the consumers are becoming ever more um, educated and aware and um, you know the the ability to access information on mobile devices particularly is playing you know an incredibly big component in the industry I mean it's been probably two years since I've had a consumer walk into one of our stores with a magazine in their hands, uh, and that's not to disparage magazines because they have their place, um, but <clears throat> they no longer come in with the magazine and say, hey, do you have this? They come in with their smartphone and they go, hey, I just read this online just before lunch. Do you have this? It sounds really good. And I think we're going to see more in that, of that, and it gives the small producers exposure that, frankly, none of us could ever otherwise afford. Right, right. And I think that's a good trend. Absolutely, absolutely. And you've been very uh, supportive of the, uh, the media part of the industry, the online media part as well. I believe very strongly in the online media. I believe that there's, um, there's some debate about that in the industry. Um, there are folks in the industry I agree with, obviously, and folks I disagree with. Um, I don't see the online media as a threat to the industry or the existing print media. Uh, rather, I see it as an extension of what we're capable of doing to reach consumers. And consumers are ever more, and we all know this, uh, accessing their information, even about their local newspaper, online. Um, so, I think that we we misserve the industry uh, as a whole when we disparage or discourage in any way the efforts of the online media, because quite frankly. Um, it may not be the preponderance of where people get their information today, but 12 months from now, 18 months from now, 24 months from now, guess what, folks? Wake up. It's coming. It's, it's where it's going. And <clears throat> I think that that gives us the capacity to reach out to the newer consumers who are tech-savvy, who do do things technologically. Um, that we should be reaching out to. And I think we do a disservice to the industry when we discourage the industry from wholly embracing uh, online media. And you've shared with me in terms of what are some unique things you've done with 
the Emilio Cigars model as far as your staff goes, as far as uh, the online world? What's some of the unique things you've done with that? Well, we do absolutely um, nothing other than what we see uh, works best in the marketplace. And we have found that um, very direct consumer interaction, and I'm sure you've seen me do this, on a very personal level, um, is, is tremendously effective in getting uh, awareness and knowledge out about your brand. Um, and, and I just see that, you know, I feel better about a guy if I'm going to buy his stuff. If he remembers my daughter's birthday and says, hey, by the way, tell your daughter happy birthday today. Um, and I think the brands that are overlooking that as an opportunity do themselves a disservice. Um, I, I just, I'm a strong supporter of social media. I, you know, I use Facebook heavily. I use Twitter heavily. Um, I do some things on some other sites uh, to a limited extent. But, you know, to me, that ability to directly interact with a consumer, especially as a small manufacturer, um, you know, if a guy puts something on Twitter and says, man, I just smoked Gary's whatever, and I love that cigar, I'm, I'm obligated to respond to that and say, look, I appreciate your support. I'm a small guy, and I do need your help. And I appreciate your help and your support. And I have an obligation to you to honor what you've given to me by uh, taking the time to smoke a relatively unknown brand and, um, and actually make your comments about it public. And I want the public to know I appreciate it. And I think far too few of us do that. Right. A very good point, Gary. So Emilio is now about two years into the process. Am I right? Two years? Well, six years since the initiation of the process, four years since the uh, original blending began, and yeah, about two years since uh, we actually fully came to market with product. Where do you think you are right now? Do you, do you think you're where you expected to be at in two years? You're ahead? You're behind? I'm uh, scared to death. <laughs> um, I, I We've been blessed with the fact that our products have been so well received in the marketplace that um, we, we're constantly burdened with, you know, how much more do we produce? Uh, and, and can we maintain quality control and, and keep things the way we want them to be? I never want this brand to grow to the point where we lose control of uh, what we held dear in the beginning. I always want us to hold those roots uh, tightly and, and valuably. And I think that um, where we are right now is I've been surprised by the overwhelmingly positive reception in the marketplace. Um, it has exceeded my expectations truthfully beyond my wildest dreams. Um, we're right now probably where I figured we would be about five years from now. Um, so, and with the new connections we've made in certain segments of the industry, the new factories we're beginning to work in, um, I can easily see us, as you put it about a week ago, uh, stepping out of the being a boutique cigar brand about a year from now. Uh, I think that we're rapidly approaching the point where um, that's just not who we're going to be anymore. But uh, even when we step out of that, I think that uh, it's who we always want to be in our hearts. And so the, the product quality has to remain there, and the integrity of the product has to, has to be before anything else. And you heard me say earlier this evening that, uh, you know, I have a pretty standard answer to everybody's question when they say, well, when are you going to release such and such when it's ready? Uh, well, we're out of this product right now. That's okay. Um, when I have more and it's and I approve it, I'll release it. And I think we'll do that for the entire balance of our career. Some people will not like that, um, but the people that really get it in the industry, they'll be fine with that. 
Exactly. Well, Gary, thank you very much for taking uh, some time out of your busy day to You're talk with welcome. us. You're most welcome. And um, look forward to thank seeing you, you in Orlando. Thanks yeah. a lot. Take Excellent. Care. Thanks for stopping. Okay, it's Will signing off.